Today, I will be discussing the Nuremberg and Mate and Nuremberg and Later experiments. After the discovery of DNA structure in 1953 by Watson and Crick, scientists then began to wonder about the relationship between the sequences of nucleotides on mRNA to the sequence of amino acid produced in the polypeptides, otherwise known as the genetic code. Early researchers recognized that codons, which are the set of nucleotides that encode a specific amino acid, must contain a minimum of three nucleotides. A triplet codon would be the most efficient way to encode all 20 amino acids. In 1961, Crick and his colleagues confirmed this theory and that the genetic code indeed involved a triplet code. The next step was to determine which sequence of three nucleotides corresponded to each amino acid. That's where Nuremberg and Mattei come in. In 1961, Nuremberg and his lab partner Matei became the first people to determine that a specific RNA sequence coded for a specific amino acid. Here is how they did it. They synthetically produced a polyuhomopolymer, which is a polymer where every monomer unit is the same. In this case, all uracil, or U. They accomplished this by taking uracil nucleotides and the enzyme polynucleotide phosphorylase, which does not require a template, and will randomly link together any RNA nucleotides that are present. These polyurNAs were then added to 20 test tubes, each containing components necessary for translation, and all 20 amino acids. A different radioactively labeled amino acid was in each tube. Phenylalanine was the only tube that contained radioactive protein, which showed that the codon UUU encodes for that specific amino acid. Nuremberg and Mattei then repeated this experiment using poly-C and poly-A RNA, and the results showed that the CCC codon encodes the amino acid proline, while AAA encodes lysine. However, technical issues during the poly-G trial rendered the results uninterpretable. Nuremberg then teamed up with Philip Later and developed a new technique for deciphering the code by using ribosome-bound tRNAs instead. They used very short mRNAs with the already known codons and synthesized them with a mixture of ribosomes and tRNAs that were attached to amino acids. These tRNAs paired with the ribosome-bound mRNAs and stuck whenever passed through a cellulose filter. This was a very efficient technique as it could be used with very short synthetic mRNA molecules that could be synthesized with known sequences. Through this, they were able to identify the remaining amino acids through the system, totaling to 64 codons, thus creating the coding dictionary.